Okay, we're back with my co-host, who is Tim Price, partner and director of investments at PFP Wealth, and the guest, the honoured guest, Charlie Burton, founder of Easy Trader. How are you today? Yeah, very good, thanks. Yeah, you know, pretty you've got good. Suntan and everything. It's, uh, is it something well, local? Uh, no, I got caught out in the sun last weekend, I think, and um, a little bit red, but yeah. Well, okay, well, yeah. um, let's get on to something which is um, your speciality, apart from getting, getting a suntan, and that is trading, uh, trading yep. techniques. Um, I suppose uh, from my perspective, um, I suppose I like, to, I like to think that most people can get the basics, but then it really is the mind games which, is, which are the problem. It is, yeah. Um, anyone can be taught the tech the technical, so to speak, the technical aspects, because that's just something that you can learn, so to speak. What's much harder is to learn the mindset, yes. And I do think that it's something which takes time. It's, it's something that there's no substitute for experience. You can teach people all these mindset tricks, so to speak, but it's still going to take them time to actually develop that themselves. But why is everything so counterintuitive? Everything which is correct is counterintuitive. Like, you know, you take a profit, you think you never lose money by taking a profit. Yeah. But that's the worst thing you can do. It's one of the worst adages. Uh, whoever uh, coined that phrase, I think it's awful because there's no, there's no harm in taking a profit. Well, if the profit's only after one pip, so to speak, then it's not, there's a bit of harm in that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it is one of the hardest things. It goes against our basic human instinct, doesn't it? And I think we've got some slides to go through. But um, our basic instincts are to um, fight or flight. And when it comes to the markets, most of the time we want to run away from but the, yeah, this is the, I think I heard it was like an American uh, guy sort of saying, you know, we're, we're hot wired or we're hard wired t to lose money. I mean, that's our basic setting in the markets. And, it's for, you've got to, and you've got to like, literally do the opposite of whatever your immediate re um, instinct is. Well, yeah, exactly. Fight or flight. And uh, the, the immediate reaction a lot of the time is to, is to, is to fly away. And like, as we all know, sometimes those best trades are the ones which look terrible at the time when we're looking at them and they actually become the best, the best trades that we could possibly take. So, um, yeah, it is uh, an I interesting a, thing. Sorry to interrupt. I heard a, had a superb quote a while back, which was, we have cave brains or lizard brains, we have medieval institutions and we have godlike technology. And that, that speaks to the same point, that we're not hardwired for, no. for successful trading. Yeah. We're hardwired, to, as you said, to run away, to panic. Yeah because our, our, our threats for most of our evolved history were things like saber-toothed tigers, not, not markets going against us. Exactly. And that's why a lot of traders are trying to go down the automation route and trying to automate their trading because to try and remove themselves psychologically from being there in front of the screens and having to make that decision, whether it be to buy or sell or close a profit. But they don't, yeah, but yeah, they don't even do that. They, they've got the sort of, you know, the, 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 the blue signal and the red signal and they start sort of jobbing between, you know, whether yeah. the, which, is, which is the yeah. good one, which is the bad one. So it's a, to, I mean, it's a t total disaster, isn't it? it well, and, and actually, it's very, very difficult for the average trader to actually automate anyway. There's lots of software out there now that you can use for the average retail trader, but actually, it's quite it's still quite difficult. I'm sure you know to actually get a, a, a very a profitable system over time. Because do you do you just I mean do you recommend people just looking at a chart, looking at the screen, looking at the live prices, and you know the sort of the the hard right edge, no thrill, no frills on the chart, just very simple. Is that something that you would actually? Recommend? Well, yeah. I mean, price action is the most important thing you can you can start with anyway. And I'm a big believer in being a chart reader and being able to read the the charts, um, read the markets. I think that too many people are looking for the easy way out. They're looking for some sort of magical solution, which might be a red and blue, whatever it might be. Well, maybe that's because of the name of your company. Well, let's, let's forget that. We <laughs> named that years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. We thought it'd be catchy. But, um, but yeah, too many people are looking for that easy solution. And the reality is, as we know, it's not that, that straightforward. What we have to do, and that, actually that first point there, is embrace rejection. We have to get used to, like we're talking about being hardwired, get used to taking losses, and yet most people almost can't accept that. If, you, if I sat it down with horrible. you... It sounds horrible. It's like, you know, if I start, if I say, I could do a, you know, a lecture on the market, sort of saying the first thing is be happy with, with losses. As soon as you say losses, the word loss, mm. I mean, it's like people like want to leave the room. Absolutely. Even if you said to someone, I can give you a strategy which has, I don't know, for argument to say, a 60% uh, success rate and they would be happy while sat in this room with you um, saying yeah okay I'll be happy with that as soon so as the they go through the as soon as they go through those losers yeah. that's it then they start to hesitate and they start to second guess and make all of those decisions which all of a sudden makes them underperform the strategy so yes I'm a big believer that it, it takes time and um, embracing rejection I'd always say to someone look 
you've got to accept taking losses. Don't get so all-encompassed in that one trade that you're taking right now. This one trade you're taking right now is just one trade in the next thousand trades. Try to put it in perspective and actually minimize the importance of the, of the very next trade that you're taking. And it's all those sort of little tricks that a trader can, can take to, um, to help at least. It's easy for me to say it. I've been there and we've been there trading for years. But at least if they make some little notes of this sort of thing, then it might actually help them. All right, so, I mean, the second point there? Yeah, I said ask yourself lots of questions, which I do on a day, daily basis. Um, this is really for those traders who, who jump into a trade and then regret taking it after, t after taking that trade because they shouldn't have taken it in the first place. And I always say to someone, if I take this trade right now and it fails, will I kick myself for taking that trade? It's just a, like, a, a, like a stopping mechanism just before taking that next trade because too often people are sat there at their home offices or wherever they might be clicking away and they're not Really thinking about the consequences of what may happen next but that may that arresting mechanism may just stop them from from jumping in because they may say actually yes if that fails no actually this setup isn't quite right I'm just trading on emotion here because this market's flying up and I want a piece of the action I'm not letting it letting it come to me and that can help just arrest that and just pull them back in before they're about to go and make a bad decision is there a role for for trading you know for putting trades on or considering trades after the market's closed, so you're not doing it live, you're doing it with, with, with some of the emotion left on the side. Well, absolutely, but that's more swing trading, and, um, and there is an element of, of less emotion if you're swing trading as opposed to you know, trading live, so yeah. to speak, whilst the markets are moving. So there is, there is indeed. It takes some of the heat out, doesn't it? It does, yeah. They're still going to, you're right in that they're still, they've got more time to make that decision. Whereas if you're intraday trading, then you've got to make that decision in the space of five, ten minutes, whatever it might be. You can think about it and ponder it a little bit more. Um, you're still going to make those um, you know, erratical decisions anyway, because sure. um, people are still going to be irrational when it comes to the markets. Mm -hmm. But it can help, yeah, absolutely. Just, I mean, we've got a minute left. What's the, what's the most sort of important uh, thing we should take away okay. from this? Okay, well, let's go slide. to the final one then. Um, it says, mentally map out your trades over and over. Don't allow yourself to be shaken off. The markets, as we know, are a great mechanism. They're like a bucking bronco trying to chuck us off um, constantly, even if we're on the right trend. And what I do over and over again is to ensure that I constantly reanalyze why I took that trade and I go through all the way up to the big time frames, so the monthly charts and the quarterly charts, all the way up to ensure, to remind myself why I've got to stay on that trend. Because otherwise it's too easy, as we know, to just jump off and take a small profit only to then see the market carry on going higher. And I mean, in term, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that is the thing. I mean, apart from, um, you know, I think the difficulty we, people have, apart from the, the losses, you know, the, getting the one, two, well, lot, you know, two or three losses in a row, which is, then they change the strategy, yeah. is taking those big wins. Yes. And it's just the heat of success, which people seem to be, that's the thing that, that really makes the difference between being uh, a successful or unsuccessful trader. Everybody, every, all the winners have losses. All the winning traders have losses. Yeah. But it's the, 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 the ones who make the big money are the ones who are in dollar yen from 100, and it's now 125. Mm. Uh, they're in the FTSE, you know, short from 7,000, it's 6,600 now. Those are the big trades that people take, and or obviously within the day equivalent trades. Um, how do you instill that, that sort of idea of staying in and just letting the trade do the work? Well, like I said, you have to reanalyze. You have to keep reminding yourself, go back over analysis. What will happen is if you don't carry on going, going through that repetition exercise, all that happens is you'll, you start off with this view and it becomes narrower and narrower and narrower as you just focus in on the markets. And all of a sudden, the market's just done a nice few hundred point move, but you're actually looking for a thousand points. And, and you start seeing all the reasons why you should come out right now, because the blinkers are on. You have to keep reminding yourself of that bigger picture picture and, and, um, and stay with that view. Okay, well, uh, I'm sure the, the, the case continues in terms of trading, uh, never, never ends. Uh, Charlie Burton, founder of Easy Trader, thanks for coming in today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon with some more insight. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, we'll be back after the break.